How's it going, you guys? Today we are gonna go over seven shrubs to fit into any garden that you have. So these are all small type shrubs that you should be able to just tuck into your garden. I have all of them except for one that I would like to add to the garden this year. Um, well, next year I would like to add it to the garden, but all of these I do have, so I have experience with them and I feel very comfortable recommending all of these shrubs. They are all proven winners shrubs though. Um, but they they perform so beautifully and they're all ones that I've now had for at least two years at minimum So um, before we jump into it because I get questions I got questions last time I sat right here. This right here is the espalier that we did. This is with a honeysuckle um, I will link that video down in the description down below right here right next to me. This is the wicked witch coleus and it is a beautiful coleus it has a little bit of slug damage to it right now but it's it's one of my favorites huge huge leaves to it and then right here behind me this is love lights bleeding amaranth and it's a really really beautiful amaranth i think that is five plants right there and it is staked up and it was actually a voluntary plant so um i had it growing there last year and seedlings came up so i let it just do its thing so we're gonna just jump into this i have my computer and my phone because i am not gonna remember all of the details of every single one of these plants so let's just jump into this the very first one that we're going to be talking about today is pugster blue or any of the pugster series i guess but i do have experience with the pugster blue butterfly bush and um oh, she is so beautiful she only gets about two feet tall and three feet wide at maturity. Ours hit that its second year in the ground. Um, it's about two and a half feet tall now, um, but it's, it is so, so pretty. It's a drought tolerant plant, so it doesn't need that much water. It does need water though. <laughs> we learned that the hard way because we actually ended up turning our drip irrigation off to that zone on accident. Um, but it does require some water. <laughs> um, but it's a really, really beautiful plant. These long purple plumes of these decadent smelling blooms that the butterflies and the bees go absolutely crazy for. The hummingbirds also really enjoy it, which um, I didn't know hummingbirds went after butterfly bushes, but I mean, it makes sense because they have the long skinny flowers, but it's an amazing plant. Um, I, I love it. We have that one and I would like to add a couple more to the garden. The Pugster series butterfly bushes are zones five through nine and they all pretty much range about two feet tall and uh, two feet wide. This one, the blue gets three feet wide, but for the most part, it's two to three feet tall, two to three feet wide. And there, there's a whole bunch of different colors. It's the pink one, an amethyst one. There's purples, pinks. There's a lot of different colors and some of them do have different leaf structures. What's really cool about the Pugster series is you get full blooms that you would normally get on a large butterfly bush, so they're huge on a much more compact butterfly bush. So if you have somewhere that you just need to tuck it in or tuck a plant in that gets full sun, that is the plant to go for. You will get huge blooms, long shows, and they do bloom on new wood, which is really nice. So that way, if you have a deer that comes through, which they are deer resistant and rabbit resistant, so but they do bloom on new wood. So should one of those animals decide to chew it down, um, you'll get a whole bunch of new growth in the springtime and then blooms. So that's really, really nice. One thing that you don't have to worry about. The next plant is one that I actually I have not been growing that long, but it has quickly become a favorite of mine, like very, very quickly. I thought that I was gonna kill it and it has performed so beautifully. It has not stopped blooming pretty much since I put it in the ground, which has shocked me completely. It is the Beyond Pinked Bluebeard and it is amazing. The hummingbirds and the bees love that thing. I'm looking over there right now and I literally can see bees buzzing around on top of it. It is so pretty. It looks a little like out of this world the way that the blooms kind of like go up the stems of the plant, but it is so cool. It's an amazing plant. It only reaches two and a half feet tall and two and a half feet wide, so it fits anywhere in the garden. It requires full sun and it gets full sun in our garden and it does so incredibly well. I have been pleasantly shocked by this plant. I would love to do like a border with them. I think that that would be so pretty. A whole border of these like spiky little blooms backed by something a little bit taller. That would be incredible. Maybe some coleus behind there. Maybe some wicked witch coleus. Whew, 
that would be so pretty. While I'm looking on the Proven Winners websites, it says that it does comp it does attract bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds, which is really, really cool. Um, I just, anything that attracts hummingbirds, I'm all about. <laughs> um, and it does have fall interest. It's heat tolerant. You don't need to deadhead it, which I have noticed that. You don't even notice when the blooms disappear off of it. They just kind of like fade away and it's already pushing new blooms higher up than where the blooms had currently faded, which was really nice. Um, God, it's, it's been an amazing performer in a very short period of time in our garden. It does only grow though in zones 7B through nine. So it is something that likes a little bit more heat. So if you're in those colder zones, sorry, this is not one for you. The next one that we're gonna talk about is Firelight Tidbit and it's a hydrangea and I love hydrangeas and I love hydrangeas that perform well in my area. Like I said, we are in zone nine and we get hot. We will hit over 110 for weeks on end during the summer months. And if a plant can survive that, it's, it's doing great, especially a hydrangea of all things. And it is the zones three through eight. So the firelight tidbit gets three feet tall, three feet wide, perfect hydrangea to put anywhere in anybody's garden. Everyone has three feet that they could, I'm sure, squeeze a little plant into. <laughs> um, full sun to part sun, me in zone nine, I do give it somewhere where it gets sun and then protection from the very hot afternoon sun so it doesn't cook. So it gets that full morning sun, a little bit of like afternoon sun and then protection from like midday to the end of the day. So, um, but if you're in those colder zones or areas like I would say like Michigan, um, places like that, I would probably plant it somewhere in full sun. On the firelight tidbit, I really like the blooms of it, how you kind of get like a little array of colors like that white creamy color to like a pinkish to like a reddish color. I think that's really pretty. Pink is one of my favorite colors to use in the garden. And it just kind of like happened. I didn't plan for it to happen, but we have so many pink blooms in the garden, but I just think that they look so nice. So we do have a ton of pink blooms in the garden and um, I'm never mad at adding another one. <laughs> the Firelight Tidbit is really nice though because it does produce those like mop head style blooms. And for us in warmer zones, growing any of those like really rounded, beautiful, classic looking hydrangeas, especially the like blues and white colors is not something that is possible at all. So um, this one grows those, like they start out white and then they age to a more like fiery red color without the burning problem that I normally have here with other hydrangeas. So that is one thing that's really, really nice is I don't have to worry about those giant heads, blooms also like flopping over, which they get too heavy and then they'll fall over. This one has really sturdy stems. So um, it's not something that I need to even think about, stressing about it having heads that are gonna start flopping over and reaching towards the ground. So really strong, sturdy stems and um, good little plant to be able to tuck it, especially at three feet tall and three feet wide. The next one is one that I'm really excited about and I think not many people know about it. And if they do, I think it's underappreciated in the garden. It's called Scentlandia and it is a sweet spire or Aitea. And I love it. We have two, well, we have one that's already planted and I have another one sitting in its can and I'm waiting till this springtime to get it planted. Um, it's kind of started to go into its dormancy stage. Um, it went a little bit early this year because it's still in its can. The one that we have though, we have it in a giant rolled rim terracotta pot and it's starting to change to its fall color. <sighs> she is beautiful. Okay, let me go over the facts really quick though. The Scentlandia gets three feet tall, three feet wide, perfect for any spot in the garden. I, I need more of these. And it is a zones five through nine. So perfect little plant. They are so pretty, like most of the year. They put out their blooms very early in the springtime and they have these long cascading blooms. They kind of, I want to say that they remind me of amaranth, but they remind me of like just a little piece of the amaranth and they're these like white colors and they just kind of cascade down and the bees are insane for them it is a really nice like early food for the bees in the garden um and then as it ages it, it produces blooms until mid to late summer um ours like just stopped maybe a month and a half ago producing blooms which is just crazy 
then it's green and it's beautiful and it's got this really cool structure shape to it we have it in a really large rolled room terracotta so it kind of like cascades down the sides of it a little bit it's oh, chef's kiss on this plant okay if any of them grow this one um and then in the fall time the leaves that turn these beautiful orangey coppery red colors and it is a magical plant and it holds on to them till late into the fall time right up till that winter time and then it'll just drop those leaves and then just a few months later all of a sudden it's coming back it's a beautiful plant grow this one if any of them in your garden the scent the scent landia is amazing and then it also the perfume that comes off of it it took us a while to figure out what we kept smelling all spring long it is this plant it is amazing we have it and it's maybe six seven feet away from where we sit all the time in our little gazebo area and the perfume that it lets out is magical it smells like a vanilla lilac it's it's phenomenal so it's it's definitely one that I would probably put like way up there on my list but I forget about it um, and I think it's an underrated plant in the garden the next plant is one that I probably shouldn't be able to grow in my zone because I've heard a lot of other people complaining that they can't grow it in our zone but for somehow the last two years I have been able to grow it with out fail and it looks beautiful the entire growing season and that is spirea spirea is the zones four through eight i'm in a zone nine and i am able to grow it here we found kind of a few microclimates in our area and so i have it tucked in an area where it's not getting full sun they want full sun but it's i'm not going to give this one full sun we have two of them on the property so we have double play red spirea and double play candy corn spirea both of them are amazing but if you want the biggest show that you can get the candy corn one is the one that you want to grow so the candy corn gets two feet tall two and a half feet wide perfect little shrub it has amazing show that it does so the new growth that comes out of the ground is this fire red color like fire engine red color it is amazing and then as it starts to age it turns this like yellowy color um, and an orange color and right now it's actually a little bit of a green color and that's because i do grow it in somewhere where it gets it gets shade i grow it in the shade um just because i'm in zone nine and i didn't want it to fry so normally part sun to full sun zone nine i'm planting it somewhere where it gets a little bit of evening sun and for the rest of the day it's in shade it's in like filtered shade so it still gets some light, like like an area that i would probably grow like more of a hardy fern um beautiful plant though i love it right now it's solid green but for the rest of the season it normally has like this huge show and i think you get more of a show with more sunlight that it gets and that's definitely true for a lot of plants that have color like that the other one is the double play red spirea and that one is a very dark spirea um, like a purple black color leaves and even though that one is also grown in a more shady area it gets a little bit more sun than the candy corn that one um, is more like a purpley color a purple green color for the leaves and the flowers on that one are a very very true red color like a like a hot pink red if that makes sense it's not quite pink but it's not quite like red red it's like a pink red magenta it's still red i still think of it and i think red um really pretty blooms though i love it i love both the spireas like i said um very small the spirea red gets three feet tall three feet wide and the candy corn gets two feet tall two and a half feet wide the next one that we're going to talk about is a another hydrangea i just i love hydrangeas they just <laughs> I wish I could grow them in mass in our area in more sunlight, but I have to find little areas with dappled sunlight or where they get full morning sunlight and protection from our hot afternoon sun. So the next one is little quick fire hydrangea and we have one of these on the property and it gets the sweetest blooms. I do have it in an area that it gets a little bit too much sun because it gets hit with that hot, hot afternoon sun. So I kind of need to move it down the way a little bit so it gets a little more protection from that and so that way it gets um, 
like more morning sun and less afternoon sun, but still a beautiful plant nonetheless. It is a zones at three through eight, and this one does get a little bit bigger at five feet tall and five feet wide. The reason I do recommend this one though is because this one does start to bloom a little bit before most of the other hydrangeas start to bloom. So that's kind of how you know like things are about to start kicking off in the garden is when this one starts to bloom and go like crazy. That's when you know that you're about to just start getting all the blooms from all of the other hydrangeas. Um, this one also has that like fiery red color. It's a really, really pretty hydrangea and it's still compact, but five feet, it's kind of like, whew, that's when I start to think like it's a medium sized shrub, but I'm keeping it in the small shrubs because we have it and it's kind of a slow grower. So I really think that you could keep this one in check and it doesn't have to get to five feet tall or five feet wide. We've had it in the ground for two years and it's maybe two and a half feet tall, two and a half feet wide. So not super massive, um, slow grower. So I really think it would be an easy one to keep in check and not one that's just gonna continue to take over the garden and kind of drive you crazy. All right, and the last one is one that I haven't grown, but I would really love to add to the property. Um, <laughs> so this one, like I said, I haven't grown it yet. I would love to add it to the property. I think it's so magical. And this one is more for winter interest instead of like the other ones are all, I've talked about how they bloom so early or they grow so early. And I've talked about the flowers on all of them. So this is not one that you're really growing for the flowers. This one you're growing for what it does in the winter time. This one that I would love to grow is called Berry Poppins Winterberry. And I think it's a magical plant. I see that one and I just think of going to the snow and winter time and I think about the structure and the interest that it would add in the winter would be so, so incredibly beautiful. And what's really nice is it only gets four feet tall, four feet wide. So I really could easily find somewhere for that shrub to go. It, it does want a pretty good amount of sun. So I would have to find somewhere on this side of our property um, that it could go, which I'm kind of limited on four foot spacing, but I would love to still find it. And the other thing is, you do need Mr. Poppins to grow with it also, which is another four foot shrub. So I guess in total, I would need eight feet for these two shrubs, but that one I could grow somewhere else. It needs to be within about 50 feet or so of the other berry bushes, which Mr. Poppins does pollinate up to, I think four shrubs. Um, so, and the, it does, there's another one that I would love to add. If I do add, berry poppins which means i need to get a mr poppins i would really like to add the berry heavy gold um winter berry but i don't have room for that one i think that one gets like eight feet tall eight feet wide <laughs> but if i'm gonna add the mr poppins i might as well find room i just want those beautiful berries especially for winter time and like fall time arrangements the gold one would be so pretty the red one would be stunning to be able to use so i think i could find a four foot space for the berry poppins and a four foot space away from it um, within 50 feet for the Mr. Poppins. Oh, they're so pretty. All of these winter berries are zones three through nine, so extremely cold hardy, and they can go in a zone nine, which I think is amazing. I really didn't think for the longest time that I could grow them here in a zone nine, so I never looked. And then I just started looking into it maybe like three months ago. Um, when I was looking into some other plants, they're the like proud berries. I was looking into those. Oh, and I found these and I was in love. So I would like to add those next year to the garden. Not one that I've grown yet, but I think would be a huge impact in the garden. And it's green for all of summer and springtime. So, you know, what's, what's the problem with adding another green shrub? <laughs> What's really nice about the Berry Poppins one is that Proven Winners has cultivated it so that way it stays on that very compact size at four feet tall and wide where winter berries will normally get like 12 to 15 feet tall and wide. They're huge, huge shrubs. And so for Proven Winners to be able to figure out how to make it so it's a much more compact shrub means that people in much more residential areas can easily grow the shrub. A lot of people I'm sure have room somewhere on the property for two little four foot shrubs. I, th I think they'd be so incredibly beautiful and I think that it needs to be used definitely more now that they've come out with a more compact variety of winter berries. And also I would love to add that gold one still. I really need that one. <laughs> 
So I think that that is going to be it for this video, you guys. That was seven shrubs to add to your garden. Um, I guess if you count Mr. Poppins and the Goldberry one, that was nine. <laughs> Um, but I think that that is going to be it for this video. I hope that you guys found a new shrub that you didn't know about and maybe you found one for your garden. So that is going to be it for this video, you guys. I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.